Hello there folks. Vinyl tags. It's always fun to do in one form or the other. And uh, I stumbled upon another one that I thought would be a fun idea to do. It is created by uh, a member called Stylus Meets Vinyl, real name Chris, who has a vinyl tag called If I Produced That Record. We would uh, think that if we were a prominent producer, record producer, or like that, uh, how would we uh, produce a song or produce a record, uh, or would we? How would we um, make a record in our collection actually look or sound like? It would be an interesting challenge, uh, and eight questions so I thought let's give those questions an answer so let's start with question number one a song that doesn't open an album but should and uh, these are by no means any easy questions because many of the records I have I'm satisfied with I don't want to change them but uh, that is part of the challenge I guess so I picked this one, uh, this is Living in a Box, 80s group, and their album Gate Crashing from 1989. A fantastic, great album. Uh, marvelous produced, marvelous sounds. I like uh, the cool voice of Richard Derbyshire. Uh, and what's open the song right now is a song called Unique. And I love that song really, really much. But it gave me to think that uh, the title track, Gate Crashing, that was a very, very minor hit. Uh, that one has such an energy and has such an intro with drums and as intro that makes people go clapping. That one would be really, really fantastic to open the album with. To get uh, an album should be a, a kind of a real starter that either um, makes you go uh, real real that makes you want to stay or that gives you a feeling of what kind of music is it on this record and uh, the gate crashing song really really is a fantastic uh, catchy and um, really really amazing energy that would make you stay uh, so uh, I would say living in a boy box gate crashing would be a perfect uh, opening for this album in my opinion uh, a song that isn't a single but should be. Uh, this one was pretty easy because uh, I said it's, it's time and time and again. It's, it's not on any album either. It's on a compilation uh, with B-sides called Alternatives. Uh, but it's not on any album. It's a B-side and uh, I thought that I said many times that this one should be a single because it's so fantastic good and so catchy. I'm talking about the B-side of Pitch Up Boys' single Go West, a song called Shameless. Uh, and uh, Shameless is uh, a very ironic and uh, great song filled with satire over the um, way people, even in 1993, wanted so badly to be celebrities and how celebrities do and so on. And I, in alternative, that there is an interview with Neil and Chris, and there uh, Neil Tennant says that he would have loved to see a video for this with, with um, um, the dolls from Spitting Image, and um, and it is so amazingly catchy. I'm very surprised that that one wasn't lifted as a single from the alternative soundtrack, but I would. It's an amazing song. So my response to this question is. Shameless by Pet Shop Boys, the B-side of Shameless, uh, of um, Go West. Number three, a record artwork that you would send back to the designer for redo. <laughs> that one was also pretty obvious, uh, because um, there are many that are so horrible that make you think, no way that this should have been released. But I think my obvious choice would have been this one. Can you see the wrong? 
the Duke Ellington and his orchestra album with Count Basie on the sleeve. <laughs> um, that error, I, I know that there are there, there also are um, um, releases with, with the right cover, but uh, I would if I saw this the first time I would definitely send it back to the <laughs> designer and say, "You idiots! You see what you have done? This is not freaking Duke Ellington. This is Count Basie." <laughs> So this definitely would be something that I would send back. Four, the hardest one in my opinion, uh, a song you could, uh, a song that you would extend to make longer. First, I thought thought it might be pretty easy actually, uh, and here I can do a, a, for once a little short rant. Uh, almost uh, half or. 75% of the songs that are released today uh, not that I am a huge fan of those or anything uh, though I started to discover that there are new songs that actually are good but the problem is that to make um, uh, the record companies uh, richer and um, um, to make Spotify happy uh, they making the songs shorter so people would have to li buy them over and over again in order to uh, in order to uh, um, listen to them again and everyone can make more money and uh, imagine um, the future if uh, that would be continuing you would have an intro and one um, one refrain because the refrain of course is supposed to be the thing that people remembers and the intro is to lead you in an intro and a refrain of uh, for um, under a minute how fun would it to be a composer then knowing that you can't fully do your, what you love to do to compose music to people because the record companies wants to sell mostly and they want songs under a minute maybe under 30 seconds if we're really unlucky so I would say most of those songs but it was supposed to be from my collection and I don't have any of those in my collection so I had to rethink um, what to pick but I eventually found actually two uh, responses uh, first Alan Parsons project I in the sky album uh, a real classic a fantastic one on there, the opening track is a 1 and 48 minute long instrumental piece called Sirius, Sirius, uh, Sirius, uh, and uh, that one works as a kind of a special intro for Eye in the Sky, or in, not intro, but the songs are mixed in to each other. Uh, for those of you who, um, like me, are wrestling fans, you might recall that song as the theme song that Ricky the Dragon Steamboat used when he was in the WWF WWE now uh, and uh, I would actually um, have taken Sirius and uh, made it a song of its own uh, separated from I in the Sky and made it, made it a song of its own for at least five minutes because that one is so amazing with the oriental style and the staggering uh, song that uh, piece by piece lifts up to something real real magnificent so uh, serious by um, uh, Alan Parsons project uh, 148, uh, 148 in this original should be at least five uh, there is also one that are a little too short. This one also is around the same, uh, 148, 150. Uh, the 59th Street Bridge Song, Feeling Groovy by Simon and Garfunkel. Also something that could have been developed into a whole lot longer. Maybe not five minutes, but at least four. So then, flip the coin and a song that you would cut to make shorter um, it's also very hard a lot of jazz songs are maybe a little bit too long uh, 
but also many songs that are long but shouldn't be any shorter because they are so great. Uh, I actually though picked, even here you can't escape them, Depeche Mode from the music for the masses. Uh, and uh, I said that this is a really great album, but it has one thing that I'm a little bit hesitating to, and that is that the singles are not in any kind of single version. And I am not no huge fan of that. When you're li releasing a single and um, let it go on the radio to promote an album, and when you buy the album, that single sounds completely different. Uh, and I'm no huge fan of that. Because I'm, I'm, if you get used to the single and love the single, you want it on the, on the same album. And uh, here I could pick any one of those, but uh, because I think all of the singles are in any kind of other version. But uh, the, the album version of Behind the Wheel here is uh, five and a half minutes, I think, something like that. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to complain that it is that long, of course, because it's a great song. It is really fantastic made. I can listen to it for five minutes. But, as I said, the single version is shorter, and I want the single versions on the albums. Uh, so uh, that one I would cut down and put the single version of Behind the Wheel in in uh, the music for the masses uh, to change an uh, otherwise extremely good, great album. Of course, it is Depeche Mode. Uh, a double album that you would uh, uh, condense into a single album. Uh, also a very hard one. Uh, because uh, many of the double album with jazz is just so great that they I would not want it to be any shorter and, or and that goes for many of the uh, double albums that I have that are great and um, there's a reason for them for being in double album uh, I picked this one though that is a good album uh, one of the best with this artist I'm talking about Brian Adams waking up the neighbors from 9 to 1 uh, containing some great songs everything I do I do for you maybe a little bit overplayed but still a really really nice touching song uh, can't stop this thing we started a rock and roller I thought I died and gone to heaven really great ones it also had a numerous amount of singles uh, but it is a double album and I'm not sure that I think that this is suitable for a double album. Maybe it is a little too much for its own good. Uh, I think that even though there were m many singles, and if you would have a single album, single album, it might have only been singles from this album. But okay, remove some of the singles that is uh, weak. Or do I have to say the words? It's hardly by an strong this album. All I want is you saying. So uh, cut this down to a single album because uh, I'm not sure that it, it uh, even though it's a, it contains so many great songs, I'm not sure that it, this one actually holds up as a double album. But I still love it. But um, I think it is uh, maybe a little too much for some good. Seven, an album that you would retitle. And uh, I picked this one because this one is a nightmare for me when I'm writing it into a database or something like that. Al Stewart's 24 carats, parrots. You realize what how hard it is to write this in a database? An overcrossed P and a C way up. And uh, doesn't get any better than when you look at the vinyl and he has done exactly the same thing. I would definitely rename it into either carrots or parrots um, or something else. Uh, at the back here, uh, they have said uh, also an overcrossed P. How do you do an overcrossed P on the computer? Redo. <laughs> And finally, a song that doesn't end the album, but should. And I picked, uh, there also was a very, very hard one. 
Um, but I picked this Dire Straits Brothers in Arms album, a real fantastic album. Uh, almost each and every one of these nine songs, with one exception, Walk of Life, that I think is a cheesy, uh, almost like Swedish dancing orchestra style. Uh, and um, I, I have a hard time listening to that one. Uh, and um, Brothers in Arms song is the one who's ending the, the album here. And I would lift that one up a whole lot more and put Walk of Life at the end. Why? Because then I could listen to the other eight and then when Walk of Life comes I can lift up the... the I can take off the album, put it back in the sleeve and then I listen to it. I don't need to listen to it if it is uh, number three. but. Uh, and because then I have listened to the otherwise extremely fantastic album. And now it is placed at number three, and I have to bear with it, only to listen to uh, um, the other great, great songs. Your latest trick, Why Worry, Brothers and Arms. So put it last, Walk of Life, so I don't have to listen to it in order to listen to the other great songs. <laughs> Okay, a little selfish, but I can do that, be that once in a while, can I? Uh, so, uh, that was my response to uh, albums that I would change if I was the producer. Uh, and uh, I hope that Style Smith Vinyl and everybody else have been satisfied with my response and uh, that each and every one of you have a real nice time, no matter where you are, no matter what you do, take care and so long.